of using the dollars we have. <coughs> let's make sure that taxpayer money is being used well, and let's make sure that we do our due diligence. Okay. Ms. Royals. While 80% of the fifth penny funding goes to roads, it is proving inadequate. Getting fire protection to industrial areas is critical. The governing body is going to have to make some very difficult and possibly unpopular decisions in order to provide these services as we continue to grow. To pay for critical services, I support continuing to seek grants, no or low interest loans from the state of Wyoming, and possibly uh, minimal impact fees for new developments. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Crosby. Yes. Um, I generally support having, leaving the fifth penny tax on the ballot because it, it's one of the few th taxes that we see where our money's going in this city of Cheyenne. And uh, it's nice to know that this amount of taxes is going to specifically these sorts of things. And like I said, and I sales tax in general is a regressive tax. It means that <laughs> the poor people in our community will pay a higher percentage of their general income on sales taxable items. That causes them harder, more hardships than our more affluent families. Uh, and the maintenance of our roads should stay inside of the budget Real, real building and real infrastructure things, you know, the new courthouse or whatever, those should be the things that should be paid for, but and major projects to, for rebuilding areas could be on the fifth penny. But keeping up with the maintenance is it's dangerous to have it dependent upon what your sales tax are going to be. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Fifteen seconds. Okay, go ahead. Well, the, the main reason I feel the way I do about the fifth penny is, you know, if, if you're not going to be able to t take it on administratively is you might as well do that with the other four pennies. And, uh, you know, as leaders of the city, the, the voters get to choose, you know, the, their leaders, and they want them to be able to make those decisions. And moving forward, one of these days, they're not going to vote for it, and then we would be up a creek. I don't know what we'd do after that, so... Uh, that's why you want to take the bull by the horns and just fund those projects. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Well, uh, Dr. Quick, why don't you go ahead and we'll do it in the order. Well, just short and simple. Why would the people trust their government if their government can't trust the people to do the right thing? Mm. Okay. Ms. Broyles. I don't think I mentioned before, but I also believe in keeping it on the ballot um, sure. for the people to vote for. Some of that money also goes to provide police cars, um, support the animal shelter as well. Um, so I think right now the 80, you know, 80 percent going to roads is, is good for that particular penny. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, Dr. Aldrich. I would just once again caution any um, entity, the animal shelter or um, Comia, anyone who is dependent upon that 20 percent. Um, because, as Mr. Esquivel said, we don't know that voters are always going to guarantee that. Um, so, again, I think that the 80-20 split right now is working well, but we need to always be cautionary and be aware that that could go away. Okay, thank you. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Uh, as far as the extra 20% on the fifth penny, I believe we do need to be prepared for, you know, our nonprofits that do receive some of that money. We need to prepare them and help them seek the money elsewhere privately. Okay. Um, well, let me just, um, this question um, is sort of a, is a variation of the one I um, asked previously um, about the relationship between the city council and the mayor. And um, on repeated occasions, uh, there has been talk about a city administrator, a professional manager instead of an elected um, official to um, do the day-to-day -day management, the hiring, firing, running of the departments. Um, and so um, I guess let's just, you know, s see where you stand on that. Um, let me see. It, we'll start now with, with Dr. Quick. Um, w what are your thoughts about moving to a professional manager for the city in lieu of an elected mayor? Do you have any thoughts on uh, where you stand on that? Well, I, I like to have an elected mayor. I just want a mayor that will pay attention to what the people want. That's all. I want a mayor who will will uh, solicit the opinions 
of the constituents when there's major things going on, you know, instead of just shooting from the hip and just making a decision based on gut. Okay, and you can expand on that when we're all done, too, if you, if you want to expand further, explain. Mr. Shogren, I, I don't know if you recall, it's, it hasn't been that long, but um, it does come up and, and then uh, doesn't succeed. But where do you stand, stand on have a professional manager running the executive uh, offices versus have elected? Uh, you know, I would actually prefer a figurehead mayor. I mean, it still needs to be an elected position, but a city manager is great because they're actually keeping tune with what's going on with the managers. You know, there's no transition when their voting year comes up. There's no fear of reprisal. There's, it goes seamlessly. And on top of that, you know, I'll take it a step further. You know, I w actually wouldn't mind the chief of police and the fire chief and some of our essential pers er, positions uh, make a street commissioner position. And put that on the ballot. Give it in the hands of the voters. You know, why do we have a police chief underneath the mayor? or any person for that position or for that matter. You know, why give uh, anyone the power over the executive over our police force? You know, it kind of makes our chief of police kind of uh, a steward underneath someone else. That's scary. You know, if you get the wrong mayor in, well, there's no telling what they could do with the police, uh, chief of police. It could be very frightening. It's something we need to look at for the future. I believe it is something that needs to be voted on by the people, though. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Aldrich. I actually believe in the mayor system um, as an elected official. Um, you don't have to look very far, about 170 miles to the north, to Casper, to see what happens when you get a city manager that's out of control. That has to be bought out of a contract because they're so out of control that they're damaging the city government and the city as a, as a unit. Um, so I am definitely for a mayor where people vote them in and out. Um, I don't think that a city manager position that's a paid position where we might have to buy somebody out of a contract would be beneficial to the city of Cheyenne. And I think that, yes, you do have um, that person, that mayor over a city a police chief or a, over a fire chief, um, but a city manager wouldn't make that any different. Um, so I think that what we're doing right now works for Cheyenne, and that um, it, if it changes, it needs to be up to the people to make that change. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Ms. Broyles. I would have to agree <laughs> with you. I, the, we have a strong mayoral form of government, and I think that it's working. We did look into, very seriously, looking at uh, city management, and um, I've discovered some cities that have gone that direction have d discovered it's not a, good, not a good way to go, and have gone back the other direction. So. I'm, I'm in support of the form of government that we have today. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Crosby. Um, I completely support a, a, an elected position because it's the only place that the governed have a voice. If you had somebody that was hired on, then he's not necessarily beholden to the governed. He's, only, he's there fulfilling a job. And so, you know, I might be willing to con consider uh, hiring or, or uh, having a uh, election for police chief or for the fire chief as opposed to you know then we as opposed to them being appointed positions from the mayor uh, <coughs> just simply because then the the governed have some to, some say in Who's enforcing laws? From we do it with sheriffs, we could do it with police chiefs too. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Escabel. Yeah, I support having an elected mayor, and just because of how we discussed earlier, they have to be accountable with and good stewards of the taxpayers' money, and not just the first four cents, but the fifth and the sixth, and and possibly someday a seventh. So. All righty. And uh, is anyone add? Okay. Mr. Shogun? Uh, you know, I support electing a mayor 100% too. You know, kind of the question I was addressing, addressing is what capacity the mayor needs to be in or what the mm -hmm. capacity could the mayor be in? Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. I just wanted to point out that uh, <coughs> the mayor really represents the executive branch as well as the administrative branch of the city government and the police are the executive branch also. So the mayor has to be 
over the over the police. It's just the way this that's the way the system is set up. Yes. So Yes, and, and just, to, just to mention, in previous iterations of this idea, the uh, city administrator or manager would be hired by the city council, so we'd be working for you. It's sort of a, but anyway, yes, uh, Dr. Aldridge. I was just going to say, I think that the mayor, um, definitely in our situation in Cheyenne, is not a figurehead, is a working mayor <laughs> as an administrator and as the exec executive branch representative and is the face of Cheyenne, um, but it also might behoove her to maybe... Uh, delete her Twitter account, so. <laughs> here, here. <laughs> Does anyone want to uh, segue off that or just add to your own comments or? Okay. Yeah. Um, so we have time for just maybe one more uh, question um, but before we, well, let's, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do a couple more, I guess. Well, when, when the question that I uh, asked the previous group and uh, we'll start this with uh, Mr. Shogren. Oh, Joy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, do you support a non-discrimination ordinance that is an ordinance that would add sexual orientation to the list of things on which you cannot discriminate for employment or housing? Um, and we, we've seen various iterations come through. Where do you stand on that? Uh, I would not support a non-discrimination ordinance. I would be against it. Uh, I believe that if that happens, if something like that happens, it needs to be sponsored from the state level. I believe it's protected underneath the Wyoming Constitution and the U.S. Constitution. I believe when the city gets involved and does a state or a city ordinance to protect <coughs> a non-discrimination clause, I believe what will happen is it'll actually become convoluted, and then we'll have a bigger problem when the state and federal, if they deem it necessary to happen, to actually fix it and come through and make it happen. Okay, thank you. Dr. Aldrich. Um, I actually would have to see the wording, but my belief is, is that, a pro that it, an ordinance is not the correct way to go with an anti-discrimination um, statement. I actually think that if we're going to do that, it should be through the form of a proclamation, and I think that it should be known um, and made known and um, let employers know as well as potential employers know that um, as a community, we don't support discrimination at any level. And I think that um, as with anything else, with bullying or anything else, it has to start at the top. And I think that um, if we're going to be non-discriminatory, we need to um, start from the top and we need to let people know that um, that's not acceptable in our community, it's not part of our culture, and that it's not going to be tolerated in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Thank you. Ms. Broyles. I support the resolution that the uh, City Council had, had passed previously. I've not seen the language of a particular ordinance come through, and unlike uh, Nancy Pelosi, I read everything before I vote <laughs> on it, and so I would like to see that before actually commenting on it. Um, I'm open-minded, and I look, I look at both sides of that issue. Um, I also struggle with, you know, with religious freedom as well, and just thinking of only one example of the baker for his own religious beliefs did not want to do that. It's a private business, and I'm not sure the government should be telling him who he has to bake for and who he has to serve with his private business. On the other hand, if we're talking about the government, obviously should never discriminate for housing, employment, for any of those issues, based on any of those issues. So, so I really would have to see the language first before I would place a final vote. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Crosby. Okay. Um, I struggle with the idea that equal standing before the law is served by adding yet another special category that gets special <laughs> rights under the law. So I would oppose it just simply because we should all have the same standing under the law, whether who we are, what we believe, how we behave or what color our skin is, what religion we choose to believe in or what religions we choose not to believe in. It's equal standing under the law for everyone. It sh there sh there sh I don't see adding another category helps. To further, um, the uh, places, a lot of places that have enacted these ordinances have weaponized these ordinances to target specific individuals. Uh, frequently it's been uh, Christian uh, religious groups and Christian business owners, but it's been 
other people too that have been specifically targeted or have used the the these ordinances because they got fired because they were they got fired because of poor performance but they bring up a defi uh, a, a a ordinance law to try and fight losing their jobs thank you okay thank you mr escabel well i always said at the state level that it was really hypocritical for us to call ourselves the equality state when there were inequalities within the state so if the ordinance was similar to that of uh, Laramie and Jackson I would support it uh, but this is how far behind the times we are my company passed this within their non-discrimination policy 30 years ago so I, th I think it's time that we be a little more open-minded to some of the things that are actually happening to people out there and it puts a black eye on the community and it, as a supporter of it at the state level I certainly don't see any reason why I would not support an ordinance but uh, at the city level you probably are talking something more along the lines of a proclamation Thank you. Dr. Quick. Can I use up all my extra time from all my other questions on just this one? Because <laughs> um, I got a lot to say. Well, unfortunately, the time is short. Okay, so well, I'll go concise. right now. Make I do support quick. a non-discrimination ordinance. However, I think that people are talking about the wrong thing. Everybody's talking about the baker, and nobody's talking about the cake. All right? The cake was a special cake. All right? And the cake is really what violated this man's beliefs and I don't want to talk about religious beliefs everybody has personal beliefs that they don't want to see violated all right consider a person who is a, a tattoo artist um, <clears throat> and somebody walks into there with a swastika on the side of their head that tattoo artist um, and and asks them to put you know a KKK clan hood on the on their chest does that tattoo artist have to do that because if not he's violating that person you know is are they uh not safe with their personal beliefs against that i believe that the ordinance needs to be made against specific things that can't be discriminated against and everybody should be mentioned in the ordinance as having all the same rights everybody of color Everybody of any race, sexes, and the LBGTQ community as well, because they should be able to walk in anywhere and buy anything that anybody else could walk into that store and buy. They should be able to work anywhere else that any, anybody else could, could go work, and it should be protected. Okay. It's Thank not, you, you know, it's, it's all been civil law. It's just lawsuits until you put it as a statute. And there's actual penalties, criminal penalties involved. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dr. Aldrich. I just wanted to note, in uh, some of the previous <coughs> ward discussions of the candidates, um, several of them said that they didn't believe that discrimination existed in our community. As a high school teacher at an alternative high school, I will tell you that discrimination happens in our community almost every single day to my students who are marginalized and students of color. And it's not okay. It's not okay here in Cheyenne. It's not okay in our schools. And um, discrimination does happen. It is happening here. And if you choose to believe it doesn't, you need to probably get out more. Okay, thank you. 15, another 15 seconds. Mr. Quick. Yeah. Um, I, I believe that uh, the ordinance written the way that I w would like to have it written would protect both sides. And everybody would probably support it because it doesn't show forced acceptance, which is what the other side is afraid of. Mm -hmm. Okay. It doesn't show forced acceptance, yet it protects everybody. Okay, thank you. Uh, anyone want to? Yes. You know, as far as employment with an ordinance, you know, we live in a right to work state. I can be uh, fired for having blue hair. You know, I can be fired for coughing the wrong way. You know, it's part of the right to work problem. Just throwing that out there. Okay.